long there. Rasmick runs it down. Along with Heidi Howard of Frederick. You know, games like this are fun for the entire team, including the defenders. They're up at midfield. They get to handle the ball. They almost get to play a, a midfield position and get the offense started when the, the team's attacking. So a defender doesn't mind this sort of uh, game at all. They, they're just as uh, into the game as the offensive players are. Cindy Climaco, uh, seeing some action. We talked to, uh, talked to you about her earlier. She suffered a knee injury, uh, what was it, about two weeks ago, Sean? And she's been uh, rehabbing it, and it's good to see her back out there. You know, and in that game, uh, Lena Orbe was briefly hurt too, and then Klamaka went down. And we can see there's clearly a difference uh, in Rockville's play when they have all three captains on the field, and that's Orbe, Klamaka, and, and Julie Bowers, and when they don't. So look for them to start flying now. And we'll, we'll try to keep an eye on Cindy, uh, see how she's moving. She doesn't look to me like she's running all that well. She's pretty fast. When she's healthy, looks like she's still laboring a little bit, but they say she's much better. They're going to give her a little bit of time today, I think. That's right. And one of her trademarks is those runs down the, the side of the pitch to uh, create for a team or if she gets past everybody to uh, get a scoring chance for herself. But she loves to drive the ball all the way down to the net and then pass it right back up the middle. Yeah, she doesn't see herself as a great shooter, she told me. She says, I'm, I'm, I love to pass. I love to, to get assists. And boy, is that a great attitude to have on a team? Absolutely. It's a, you know, it's playing to strengths. It's knowing yourself, and it's knowing what it takes to win soccer. You know, the the goal of every good offensive player should be for the team to score, not just for you to score. Well, we've got a couple more substitutions. Claudia Guzman in for Kylie Harden. Claudia Guzman, one of the leading scorers on uh, this Rockville team, and of course, that's one of the advantages of having a deep bench. You can rest her and then bring her in fresh, and boy, uh, Frederick is, is in for it now. And that, that shows how potent this offense is. Guzman didn't have a lot of playing time early. She sort of worked her way into playing time in lineup. And Here she goes. She has paid dividends when she's come in. There's Rasmick. Tried to get it to the middle. Yep, look at that. We've got five of the top ten Maryland Juco scores in the game right this second. Trujillo, Orbe, Guzman, Baitka, and Rutherford. That's uh, <laughs> it's a it's a pretty good scoring punch. And uh, you know, when when you're playing a team, who are you gonna mark up against? <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, uh, it they're all dangerous. Every one of them in their own way. Of course, Trujillo being uh, the leading scorer in uh, in Maryland JUCO. Diana Cabrera doing a great job stepping up in front of Bethany Lisk to keep that ball on Rockville's side before they eventually give it up for the goal kick. Uh, but I'm looking at Bethany Lisk to kind of step up her game. She's, um, I don't know if it's a function of the game or the fact that the ball hasn't been around her. She just has not been very active on that left side. And with only two forwards up, you, uh, Frederick needs more of her to be productive on offense today. Absolutely. It can't all fall on Paul V. I mean, there's just no way. It is not a game that can, that is easily dominated by one person. And you see, can see Paul V giving chase, but that's you know that's one on four with good space between the players. Yeah, and she's going to wear out if she has to play like that the entire match. And Klamaka with the throw in. There's a good shot on goal, but just off the mark. That one came out of nowhere. You didn't need a lot of space to get that shot off. It really did. It just sort of popped out. There's Trio with the bad leg. And she did get up a little slowly. And that's only a few inches off the mark. And that's a fantastic shot from, from almost a dead stop. Boy, that, that really is a lot of pace to it and very accurate, just a little high. And Cindy Klamako making her presence felt. She won that ball and then had a quick throw in to get that shot going. And look at Bowers all the way up in the offensive end now. And she, there she shows off her dribbling skills, keeps it away from number seven, Bethany Lisk, who, as you said, you're looking for a little more from 
in this game. She, she's she got to bring a little something more for uh, Frederick to get a good scoring chance when they get the ball on their side of the field. I think one thing we should point out for Frederick here, we were told that Stephanie Caddy would be back today for Frederick, but she is not on the bench, so she had a sprained ACL, Sean, and it looks like it must still be bothering her, otherwise she'd be here today. That's right, and I did talk about her at the Open, uh, and we expected to see a little better scoring punch from Frederick, so they're shorthanded, but... Uh, she's been a player who's been hurt all year. So at this point of the season, you know, teams <laughs> teams aren't feeling sorry for you. And uh, from game to game, you might be able to excuse yourself for missing a player. But this is an injury they've been dealing with all year. Yeah. They did think she would be back today, but obviously it's still bothering her. And obviously we wish her well and a safe return to the lineup. Absolutely. I don't want to see anybody hurt. These kids play awfully hard. Of course, they're Division Three athletes, Sean. They don't get any scholarships, no financial aid, no housing. It's all about the love of the sport. It's great. It may, it's, it, it's sport at its purest form that you can have at the college level, I think. Absolutely. These are excellent high school athletes who weren't done playing yet and wanted to find another field for competition. Uh, and just because it's non-scholarship, Division Three. I mean, these aren't slouches on the field. You know, you can't just run out there and, and uh, compete and expect to be on the team. Players try out for these teams and get cut. So these are these are excellent players who just wanted to continue playing. And uh, for a team like Rockville, you can see how well they play together. Oh, absolutely. For instance, uh, the men's team for Rockville, they have over 100 guys try out for that team every year. There's a good, strong shot, but high by Rasmick. Another chance with, for Rasmick with the ball on her feet. Nice pass over there. That's a long one. Goes through the. Uh, I don't. I, guess, I don't guess we're going to give her three points for that one, Sean. No. But we do have the uh, the old school goal post from uh, the days of yore of uh, local high schools here. And when MC had a football program. Michael, you told me an interesting story about uh, the MC football program, why burgundy is one of their colors, and uh, we sometimes see uh, the R pop up on their logo, and it looks curiously like the Redskins are. Well, that's because when MC first started their football program back in the early 50s, they could not afford uniforms, and the Redskins gave them their hand-me-down uniforms, so... By default, almost, they chose uh, burgundy and gold as the school colors for the Rockville campus. And uh, you can still see burgundy and gold in a lot of the uniforms, although the, the women's soccer team right now is wearing a black and white uniform. And there's a player down. It's a Frederick player. Number eight, that is Laura Hildebrand. And she's on that back line, one of the defenders who's – uh, really played well against Rockville's pressure today and with the amount of chances and shots they've had to only let one goal in so far. Uh, part of that is a function of execution and part of that is the function of the defense taking a lot of balls away and, and making the shots more difficult for Rockville. So this is a doubly difficult situation, not only having one of their best players down on the field, but there's no substitute, Michael. If she's out of the game, then it's it's 11 on 10. Yeah, that, uh, that's that's a very tough thing. And we're going to uh, we're going to take another look while we have a moment at the first goal of the game. And there's Guzman. I'm sorry, uh, Quinones. That was in the 19th minute of the first half. Uh, Quinones assisted by Lena Orbe. Unfortunate play for Bowers there, but like we talked about, Rockville just pressures and pressures and pressures. And when you play that way on offense, the ball just bounces your way sometimes. All right, we're going to take a short break here while they attend to the injured player down on the field. We'll be right back with the rest of our first half after this. 